on this episode of Sweep Luke. Where did that beautiful, magnificent, majestic beard go? I've seen people suggest Roughhead or Darcy Moore. Not even. Alright, let's roll the intro. hold on to win by 27 points. My big call, and this might be the biggest call of the year, is that we'll come out of this game with no new injuries. So I predicted the winner, but my margin was way off, and thanks to Pirate Cox, my big call failed miserably. The boys must be avocado farmers because after a long wait, they produced the absolute goods. After conceding the opening two goals for the game, the Pies clicked into gear thanks to Trelaw's long bomb effort from outside the 50 to slow our opening goal of the first quarter. After that, there wasn't any looking back and we finished the first half 34 points to the better and by the end of the game, we effectively doubled the lead and finished the game winning by 69 points. It was our first game scoring over 100 points since that St Kilda game and that fourth quarter effort and our first game since the Melbourne game where we've actually won every single quarter and you can truly say that we had a four quarter performance. There were so many standouts in this game, our midfield clicked into gear finally and our forward line turned it on just at the right time as we're ramping up to finals. People will start saying that this win shouldn't count for much because it's only the Suns, they're a really bad team, they've lost 15 in a row. but. Okay, they weren't the best opposition in regards to giving us a run for our money, but you can't underestimate what a win against any sort of side does for your team. And it wasn't just a win by one or two points we scraped through the line like we did against West Coast, or we had a bad three quarters and then kicked six goals in that last quarter. It was a real team performance, and you could see the passion in the players finally after weeks of just looking like their chins were dragging along the ground. Thanks to this game, our form has been boosted, our morale has been boosted, and our run into September is just that much better. A win like this is a palate cleanse for our last month and a half of football and it came out exactly the right time given who we have out and what we've been able to produce these last month and a half. Last week I came out and said that our forward line was a shambles and maybe this game against the Gold Coast was the game where everything was going to finally click into place and that's exactly what happened. It took us a while to get going, but when we did, all the forwards started to deliver. Will hoskin Elliott was quiet for the first 45 minutes, as was Travis Farco, but when the hyphen slotted that goal from 50, he went on to kick another three, finished the game with four, and became the highest scoring forward for the game. Travis Farco has been quiet these last couple of weeks, but this game really sparked him into motion, kicked two goals, and looked very lively up forward. Mason Cox's first half was actually pretty decent. He chopped out Grundy in the ruck for the most part. You can see this clever tap to Trelaw who goes on to set up Jamie Elliott for that goal. He kicked a goal and his work in the forward line, helping out his forwards, was actually really great to see. I like this passage of play here where Majacek is leading out and you can see that Cox gives Majacek's opponent just a little bit of a hip and shoulder, puts the arm out a little bit, creates that separation for Majacek to run on and get that ball. It's those little things like that where Cox hasn't been able to do for the last couple of months. He started to do it in that first half but ultimately Got that eye injury and now we won't see him for the rest of the season. So Elliot, Varko and Chekers all kicked two, while Josh Thomas, whose form hasn't been great, kicked one and also, just like Varko, looked lively in that forward line, like the swoop squad was last year. It actually helps that our midfield were delivering the ball on a silver platter as opposed to bombing it up and long to no one in particular. Steel side bottom as a forward, I absolutely love it. So last week, David King came out and said that Steel should be playing in that forward line and the coaches must have been listening because that's exactly where he played. He played off that half forward flank. Yes, he gathered most of his possessions on that wing. Playing off that half forward line, he's very smart and he can read the play before the play happens. Kind of like what Pendlebury does. You can see in this passage of play here where Varka grabs a ball, Steele's already running towards goal because he can just tell what's happening. That's where we talk about that footy IQ and that's exactly what Steele has and why he's going to be an asset leading into September and during the finals themselves. 
Our midfield put on a masterclass today. Our run and carry game has been something that we've lacked for most of the year and something that we loved seeing last year. And with yesterday's game, it was back and it was back with a vengeance. Yesterday, we were breaking the lines and not only taking the game on in our running sense, but we were hitting those diagonal kicks where the boys, you know, instead of going long, they open up their peripherals and hit those kicks on an angle. That way, it breaks up the play and catches Gold Coast on the back foot and we're able to go forward more efficiently. And look, sometimes those kicks don't work out. A good example of this is when Crispy had it in that back pocket, tried to hit Ali in the middle of the back line, and it got turned over, CX didn't kick that goal. But if you don't dare, if you don't take on the game, you're just going to be playing a bland style of footy, which is what we've been doing for most of the season. It was really just an exhilarating and exciting match to finally watch. And Trelaw's game was a perfect example of this. I've been really harsh on him about his disposal efficiencies, only getting the one-twos, not doing anything about it, kicking it blindly in hope. But yesterday's game, he was exquisite. He went at over 90% disposal efficiency and pretty much made every disposal count. He was hitting targets lace out and looked like he was thinking before he was kicking, which was a nice change of pace. It's just crazy to think how much of a different team we are when Taylor Adams is in that midfield. Adams coming back from injury found a lot of the ball, but he's in and under work and his ability to let Trelaw off the leash by creating that passage through the play was absolutely amazing to see. Also, I want to give a shout out to Rupert Wills. I was harsh on him earlier this season, but he was an absolute beast in that midfield yesterday. He made his present felt, and he too, along with Adams, made Trelaw play the game that he did. Trelaw doesn't have a 90% plus disposal efficiency game without Adams and Wills helping him out yesterday. Finally, there wasn't too much to dislike about yesterday's performance, but it's my job to nitpick, so here are my dislike nitpicks. We were burdened by another slow start, but luckily we rectified it in the first quarter as opposed to letting the game go on and us trying to chip it back later and later and later, and then ultimately nothing comes of it. Letting any team come out of the blocks and kick a couple goals just provides that morale booster, just provides that hope that they can go on to win, and you can see this, and this is evident in that Richmond game, the Giants game, and that Hawthorne game. As harsh as it sounds, yes, we were lucky that this happened against Gold Coast, we should be able to rectify it, but we were one of the best first quarter teams at the start of the season, and we just need to get that back before this happens in a cutthroat preliminary final game, and we get eliminated. So this is not really a dislike for the game, but where was this Collingwood when we really, truly needed them? The second half of the season has seen us play a slower moving game, and one, it's not exciting to watch, and two, it clearly doesn't work and doesn't win you many games. What we were able to produce yesterday was yes, exhilarating, yes, exciting, but with the lack of personnel that we have, the long injury list that we have, it was endearing to see, and hopefully something that we can take into the finals. But the thing I disliked the most from yesterday's game was Brody Grundy's new baby-faced look. Where did that beautiful, magnificent, majestic beard go? It just like disappeared like that. I didn't see it on any of his Instagrams. It surprised me, it shocked me, but luckily, it wasn't a Samson situation. He didn't lose his strength. He out-muscled wits. He had a great third quarter performance and great all-round performance. So these are my swoop votes for yesterday's game. One, Wilhos can Elliott. Kicked himself back into form. Great to see him in the forward line. Really liked what he did in the back line, but the forward line's where he belongs. Finished the game with four goals, one, and a morale booster for him. Two votes, Grundy. Like I said, had a mammoth third quarter, and in the second half, he didn't have Cox to chop him out, so he was on his feet in that last quarter, but went on to have a 25-plus disposal game, over 40 hitouts, and one goal. He's done that six times throughout his career, and you can see why he's the best ruckman in the league at the moment. Three votes, of course, who other than Adam Trelaw? I've been on his case all year with the disposals, but as dumb as this sounds, this was his breakout game, and surely gets him the three brown low votes. At quarter time, he had 12 disposals, five inside 50s, and three clearances, just at quarter time. We play a down on form Melbourne next week, but they shouldn't be taken lightly because we know everyone comes out and plays like it's a grand final against us. With Mason Cox going down for the rest of the year and to go in not available next week, it's going to be interesting to see who they bring up. My personal preference is they bring in Tyler Brown and move my check to the goal square to become that leading full forward. I've seen people suggest Roughhead or Darcy Moore. Not even. Darcy Moore, Roughhead, they belong in the back line. Sure, Roughhead can go into the ruck, chop out Grundy when he can. I also think that they might bring in Max Lynch. He's been an emergency a handful of times, and when it calls for a big man, he could be the one that you go to, but he's untried, so maybe this Melbourne game will give us an indication of how he can play in the senior level. 
All right, so I ran my shout out competition on Instagram again. And this week's winner is Pies Army underscore. So go chuck them a follow. They provide really sweet Collingwood content and 10 points off the actual margin is such a great effort. Also, I just want to mention about Gold Coast. How good is King? He is going to be a star of the competition. And I was hearing that he wants to maybe come back to Victoria because, you know, he wants to be close to his brother, close to his family. Obviously, his twin brother plays for St. Kilda. Could we lure that carry in front of him? Yeah, he needs a couple more pre-seasons, but he kicked three goals against us, kicked four last week. I'd really like to see him play, but for the competition's sake, I do hope he stays at the Gold Coast and they can build a team around him because what's the point of having them there if they're just going to produce players to come to other clubs? All right, so this has been my review of that Gold Coast game from yesterday. Let me know your thoughts. What did you think of the game? Who were your three, two, and one players? And as always, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, like, comment, subscribe. Also on Friday, I'll be doing my Q&A special, so make sure you leave your questions in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll sweep you later. Kind of like what Jack, kind of like what Jack Crisp did, kind of like what Crispy did before this happens in a cutthroat polyrin swoop foot. <clears throat> so these are my swoop swoop boots. All right, so this has been my review review. Why do I keep saying reviews? Because I say preview.